Good morning, folks. This is Mercury. Thousands of pictures stitched together with a little false color added for detail contrast. You'll remember a recent announcement that Mercury has water was big news for the star water hypothesis. Apparently it's on the moon as well. It's been there all along. Good article here on my recurring topic of it's climate extremes, not just global warming. We had a six-pointer yesterday in the Kermadec Islands. One has to wonder if the people there are even phased by low sixes anymore. You can see the readings spread across a wide area of the West Pacific and enough time passed that they are technically calling this another quake off the coast of Japan seven minutes later. More extreme hail in India, damaging crops and human skulls. What is being called a very minor oil leak has allegedly been completely fixed and operations resumed. In England, a device containing radioactive material has gone missing from a truck. Yes, I showed this yesterday, but I'll shift north slightly to check out the first of four major weather stories today. 2013 second tropical depression out here is expected to start trekking across the South China Sea. Then, between Africa and Madagascar, a little cyclone is brewing and expected to cross the southern part of the island. Third weather story is in Queensland, where the rain has been very heavy. The Bundaberg sinkhole is taking out buildings. They're not out of the woods just yet, although the strongest part of the rain has moved offshore for now. And finally, this is the low we examined yesterday, driving counterclockwise in a hard north on the leading east edge and pulling cold air south on the backside, creating the temperature delta. Severe storms on the convergence down south, and even more snow coming to the north side of it. By the way, those are winter alerts in Southern California and Arizona. Muon Network, second panel shows cosmic ray density is in major decline. The umbral field did its fill the void maneuver as it has the last three days and settled back. On the eastern limb, a filament erupted, not headed for Earth, but gorgeous, as always, in 304 angstroms. Then, you'll remember we had a large dark coronal hole down south and two thin dark plasma filaments above it, including the major one. Well, the smaller filament destabilized last night and is now gone. Instead of releasing a CME, the charged plasma followed field lines back into the sun, producing a hydro flare and reconnecting magnetic canopy above it. But oh, if that was only all we had. This is a diabolical amount of sunspot development in short order. You will remember that of the northern sunspots the trailing left side did the dance two days ago. Well, he is spreading now and firmly in decay, but this new guy is already moving the goes. Look at these regions. It's clear that the leading southern edge has the most magnetic mixing, likely with a delta spot or two in there. Definitely got to watch for flares. There's magnetic complexity on the south turning in as well, but the most complex and closest to the equator would need to consolidate some of those umbra. Coming back to our development on the northwest, start looking below the dark coronal hole. Do you see a little flash? This is what really kicks off the sunspot development, followed by a significant surface energetic event, or should I say events, and coronal loop formation that did expel a CME that may or may not clip our magnetic shield. Earth is off to the left as well in this frame. Lastly, happening as we speak, way up north, another filament is popping. And on the south, the mega filament is either going to slide back into the sun or erupt in a few hours. Keep our eyes on that. Neptune conjoins the sun in two days. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.